Welcome back to the studio and to my custom palette building series. In this series, I will guide you through creating your own custom watercolor palette using as an example this metal enamel travel palette which I am bringing with me when I travel to Australia in just a few days. In today's episode, I will be focusing on filling in the gaps between the colors that you already chose uh, in your color palette any bright and saturated colors that you cannot or do not wish to mix every time you paint. In the past three episodes, I've already guided you through creating a palette of eight to nine colors. In episode three, I guided you through choosing your first primary triad of cyan, magenta, and yellow, and how to mix colors with those just those three. As you can see, even with only three colors, you can already mix a wide range of bright and saturated colors all around the color wheel. Next, I showed you how you can add to your triad by choosing secondary and complementary colors to mix dark, neutral colors, as well as bright, saturated colors all around the color wheel. With six bright colors, you can mix a wide range of bright and neutral colors. Finally, in my last episode, I discussed adding convenient earthy and dark neutral colors that'll help you paint shadows and earthy subjects without extensive mixing. With the 10 colors that I've already chosen, I could easily mix all of the colors that I would ever need. Technically, I could stop here, but I still have some room in my palette. So in today's episode, I'm going to look around the color wheel and see if there's any other bright, saturated colors that I want to add to make my painting a little bit easier. First, I'd like you to take a moment to take a look at your color choices and how they fit around the color wheel. Do you have areas around the color wheel where you have more muted or fewer colors? Are there areas where you have much better coverage and a much wider mixing range? What areas do you have dark colors or brighter colors in? If you're like me, you have areas of the color wheel where you have much larger gaps between the colors that you already chose. So for example, I don't really have any bright blues or purples. I also have a somewhat larger gap between my orange and my magenta. Um, although I do have a reddish color, it is very muted, my perylene violet. On the other hand, there are some colors where I have two colors very close together, like my green and my yellow. However, I might still want a very bright green just because I really like very bright greens. I'm still debating whether to include a bright red in my palette. It would fit in right here. Um, my usual choice for this spot would be a perylene dark red, PR178. I'll swatch this out for you here right now and then we'll decide later whether to include it. I can mix fairly bright reds with my magenta and my orange color, probably bright enough for the purposes of a travel palette where I don't frequently use super saturated reds. However, in my botanical palettes, I do like to have a strong red for glazing or painting fiery red subjects. It's convenient to have. When I was filming this video, I was still debating whether I would include a red in my final palette. By the time this video is out, I have already finished packing my palette, filmed my next and final palette building video, and in fact, I'm already ready to leave. But uh, I'm still curious to know whether you would include a red in your palette. Do you consider red an essential color? Let me know down in the comments below. Next, let's take a look at blues and purples. As you'll see later in this video, I choose something a little bit different for this palette, but in my usual palettes, I usually include some kind of a violet, either 
a PV23 dioxazine violet or a PV55 quinacridone violet. So up at the top here is the dioxazine violet option that I'm painting out a sample of right now. I find violets a little bit more useful to me as a botanical artist than a bright blue because there are lots of bright violet botanical subjects but relatively few bright blue botanical subjects. However, for this particular palette, I did choose something a little bit different. So, I don't usually like ultramarines very much. I find most ultramarine paints are weak and difficult to rewet. And again, I don't have much use for bright, bright blues in my regular practice. However, for certain iridescent subjects and seascapes, which I do expect to be painting lots of in Australia, I do like a bright blue. I was stunned by Shada's sample of ultramarine blue by M. Graham. So I have decided to include that paint in this. This ultramarine is made with the same PB29 pigment as other ultramarine and French ultramarine paints. However, it is much brighter and more saturated than most ultramarines by other brands. Um, like other M. Graham paints, ultramarine blue by M. Graham may be a little bit slow to set and stay a little bit sticky in the wet in some of, of course, having some very, very bright blues. You can also see how it does neutralize very nicely with the orange on my palette. Um, perhaps even better than my original choice of PB60 in the Throne Blue. Finally, I decided to include a bright green. Given that I do have a lemony yellow and a middle green, I can already mix similarly bright greens using the colors already on my palette. However, I do really, really, really just like yellowy, bright, grassy greens. I will leave a link down below to my blog where I discuss synesthesia and my particular associations to this particular shade of green um, and why I really like having this green on my palette down below. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go check that out. Uh, but this was something that I really wanted to include in this palette, so I am including this green even though I absolutely can easily mix it and usually do. Here are swatches of the colors that I went with as well as some other options that I considered. In the next clip, you'll see me swatch the PR178 Perlene Red. Finally, looking at all of these colors all together, it really did look like I was missing some warm colors. So I decided to, at least temporarily, add a red to this palette. I may revisit this in the next step where I choose some other fun colors, uh, but I have a pan of Aquarius Red by Roman Schmal Aquarius. This is PR214. And you can see how this helps balance my color wheel and adds more warm and saturated color. I hope this video has been helpful to you in choosing some bright colors. Um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like down below and hit subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to see my next video. Um, in my next video, I'll be focusing on how you can customize your palette with some fun, unique colors. Happy painting, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.